So now I think it would be appropriate to talk about dry trees and what makes us special. Um, uh, you know, there are people out there that will say that the sealer is better than the sealer, uh, sealer A is better than sealer B. That's sort of really a meaningless thing to say. Uh, most sealers in the market are pretty much the same thing. Same sort of technology in a bottle with a different label and there's all sorts of different marketing things and some will say it'll do this and some will say it'll do that and, and other people will say you know our sealer will last a year and some people will have the same technology in the bottle and say ours one will last five years or ten years and a lot of that is marketing stuff and very much open to interpretation. Um, so we actually want to show you, we don't like using terms like better, but we have different technology and we just want to show you what makes it different and some of the advantages it has over a normal a penetrating sealer. So, here again we have this, we have this piece of, of granite that's untreated and we'll put a little bit of water on here. And we'll just leave it for a second so it leaves a nice stain. And there you can see a nice dark mark uh, where the water's penetrated the material very easily. Right, now this, a uh, stone here, the uh, same, same sort of uh, piece of stone, uh, has been treated with a very popular um, penetrating sealer on the market, a good product, and it hasn't changed the look or the texture of the surface at all. And uh, if we put, again, I'll put a whole puddle of this water on the top here, put even more on, and now the holes are still open, so uh, that's not what's stopping it going in, but the sealer will repel the water um, so it sits up on the surface instead of going into the pores. And we'll leave it there for a little longer. Just for, I mean, I could leave it here for a few hours and it should still be the same. And let's pour it off. And you'll see there's no mark left on the material. Okay. So in one way, all penetrating or impregnating, interchangeable names, do the same thing. They all repel water or they repel water and oil. Um, and they all repel things in much the same way. So in that way, all impregnators out there are the same. They don't block the pores, they work by repelling. Okay? Where they differ is that uh, is in the size of that little impregnating molecule that goes into the material and how far it can go into the pores of the material. Because having it on the top like this will definitely um, help for staining problems. As you can see, it didn't, didn't soak in like it did on the untreated piece of material. But what about all those other problems we just spoke about, which are from water moving through and even from underneath the material. So, here's the edge of the piece of material. You can see a nice light colour, same colour as, as that. And, you know, when we put something on the top, it repels it, repels it, doesn't go any darker. Let's put some water on the, on the edge of it. I'll just do it on one half so that you can see the difference. Leave it there literally for a second. Just wipe it off. Now, I don't know if you can see from there, but the, you'll see this half over here that I put the water on, it's gone dark. And this part here is still light. So the water is actually penetrated into the side. Now, you can see that even though this is called a penetrating sealer, there is no light area on the top where it's penetrated. So this whole thing has gone dark. Now, if you looked at this under a microscope, you'd see that the sealer has penetrated into it, maybe a, less than a hair's breadth into the material. So, because it actually hasn't penetrated into the pores, it can't really stop water from coming up from underneath or from the sides and causing efflorescence on the top or causing those spalling issues and so on. This sealer, whatever anybody says, it just physically can't do that because it doesn't penetrate far enough into the material. Now, the same impregnator, if you put it on something very porous, like some concrete pavers, it might give you some of that sort of protection. But then the other thing is these things also aren't permanent. Now, we come to a, a dry treat sealer. So, now this has been sealed with a dry treat product and really we use a different type of technology. And our little, I hate using the word molecule because it sends everybody to sleep and you're probably sleeping already, but in case you aren't, the size of our little impregnating molecule is much tinier. It's literally about four to five hundred times smaller than a normal impregnator. So it will actually penetrate, even a dense material like a granite, it will actually penetrate right into the pore structure of the material. So um, just to demonstrate, we'll, we'll do the same thing here. We'll pour some water on here. 
couple of lots on here. It's got a town. Wipe it off, and if you have a look there, you will see, even though we put a lot of water on here, it's still light. The water hasn't gone in. In fact, the impregnator has been able to penetrate right through the material. Now, just to prove that we aren't cheating and we haven't sort of painted it on the edge over here, I'm just going to break this in half for you. All right, and same thing. Here's the fresh edge. Fill it up with water. Pour it on here. Pour tons on. Yeah, and you can see the material is totally dry. So the, the sealer has actually penetrated almost all the way through the material. Now, this is very important because, of course, if you're water carrying your minerals and someone comes up from underneath, they'll only be able to get to where the sealer penetrated. It can still evaporate now and escape as a gas, but as water carrying all those minerals it can't go through, you can see it's, it's got wet a little bit under here, but the sealer's penetrated right until there. So this will be able to stop efflorescence because, of course, if the water carrying the minerals can't go through, it won't be able to carry those minerals and deposit them on the top. Um, same with freeze-thaw spoiling. If your water can't get into the capillaries at the top here, then it will get through from underneath and come to the top. It won't be able to expand when it gets cold and break little bits off. You won't get water with the minerals and minerals getting trapped inside there and growing and breaking bits off. If you keep the water out and you keep everything inside the water out too, then you can actually keep that material intact. So, you know, it's about the same for protecting as a, uh, against staining because it also just repels water and oil. Although, our material not only is smaller and goes in deeper, it actually makes a chemical bond in the material. It actually becomes part of the stone. So it won't wear off over time. It'll wear off the surface, but inside the stone it'll be there forever. Um, so, you know, it's going to give you permanent protection against staining and so on, so not just temporary protection against staining, but it's also going to protect against these other problems caused by water that other impregnators can't. And I guess that's the main difference with dry treat. So I wouldn't refer to it as better, I'd refer to it as different, and that it has some extra advantages. So for staining it will last longer, uh, it should last forever actually. Um, and uh, for, but it will be able to solve all these other problems that are, can be much more damaging that other impregnators can't, both because of the size of our molecule and because it goes in and actually bonds permanently with the material. So I hope that made everything clearer for you. It's a little bit of a fuzzy complex area, but hopefully that helps.